Hello everyone, welcome to Amazon Web Services Machine Learning Operations with AWS Masterclass and I welcome you all to this day 5 of this Machine Learning Operations with AWS. So in the previous classes we have discussed about all the basic necessary services we want to have an idea to work or kickstart with machine learning in AWS. Starting from the account creation, budgets, IAM, EC2, load balancing, auto scaling, elastic beanstalk, lambda, right? Then moving into data storage types where we have seen about like all the storages available, DynamoDB, RDS, finally S3 because S3 is very important for us. So in the next class we'll be like going hands on with machine learning things starting from the basics. So at that time we'll be working with data and this data is usually taken from S3 where we'll be storing our data in S3 and later on we'll be using it whenever required we are going to just use it. This That bucket is just for storage, right? We can use that link and we can access the bucket and get our data. So that's how this entire thing is going to be helpful. And from today's class onwards we are going to kick start with machine learning. So we'll be starting in this class especially we'll be seeing about the base of machine learning what is machine learning operations the introduction about it little bit elaborately about their types and then moving into amazon SageMaker. so this amazon SageMaker is a service particularly provided by aws for machine learning purpose alone so which means this is entirely for machine learning and today is day five right so the rest of the 25 days of this master class of or this internship We'll be focusing especially on this SageMaker. So we'll be working that, working on that alone. Okay. So this is going to be our elaborate part. We'll be covering all the look and corners in this AWS SageMaker. So please be ready and focused and kickstart with this SageMaker. So starting with machine learning, once again, the introduction of machine learning. So as we have discussed in the first class itself, what is mean by machine learning? So when you start discussing about machine learning, you will be having some types of it or some terminologies you may not be clear about it. So once again, little bit refresh about it. When you start learning about machine learning, you'll be hearing about artificial intelligence or image processing or natural language processing or machine learning or deep learning, neural networks. Okay. What all these things? When you talk about artificial intelligence, it's the total collective domain you can think of it. So where the artificial intelligence, the aim of it is to create an intelligence which behaves like human. Okay. So it is artificial and we are trying to create an intelligence which can like see, which can hear, which can talk, which can think, which can make decisions. Okay. And this decision making is especially achieved with something like machine learning. So machine learning is an important tool for artificial intelligence and uh, giving some advantage for machine learning. If you improve it to neural network instead of algorithms, it is called as deep learning. Okay. This is the hierarchy you can understand. So inside of artificial intelligence, a subdomain, you can call it as a machine learning and in machine learning, what we'll be doing, we'll be having some past data. So you are going to train the model or algorithm. So this algorithm is a statistical thing which is going to do just statistics and based on the data and statistical result it is going to give you output which is the prediction. Okay. So that's how this thing works. So instead of using this algorithm if you use neural network okay which is created to mimic our human brain we are will be discussing about it. So you're giving the data to this neural network and getting the output this is called as deep learning. Okay, instead of algorithm, if you are going for neural network, it is called as deep learning. And this is the entire hierarchy. So AI or artificial intelligence is a branch of computer science that is concerned with building smart and intelligent machines. Artificial intelligence refers to the simulation of human intelligence in machines that are designed to perform tasks that typically require human intelligence such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, language translation and so on. To achieve this, we will be using machine learning. So it's a subfield of artificial intelligence, which focuses on the development of algorithm and statistical model that allow computer to learn from and make predictions or decisions. Okay. 
from the past data this algorithm is going to learn and give you a prediction and how it is learning it is just using math statistics and max okay based on that it is going to give you the prediction or decision based on the past okay and especially the deep learning instead of algorithm if you are going to use neural networks which is called as artificial neural network which is created okay by inspired by the structure and function of human brain the neurons so that's what this neural network is and what are the applications right now in machine learning so now a is like coming very high and you can see now a lot of tools are developing okay this field is particularly booming right now right ai artificial intelligence so when it booms okay one of the important tool whether you go for image processing or natural language processing the base you are using is machine learning guys so like the thing is if you have a past data and if you are giving it to machine learning algorithm it will give you prediction okay and if you have image data and you are training it with machine learning model or new deep learning neural network it is going to give you prediction so this image that will comes under image perception okay visual perception and if you have like speech data then you can train the same and uh, it will give you the natural language processing like for example chat gpt we are having right so how it's working have you ever wondered it comes under ai and it's it, it is using deep learning okay it is using deep learning it is using something known as natural language processing so it's a way of like human language interpretation to the computer so there are lot of applications right now and this field is entirely booming very high right now and you can find a lot of common applications such as automatic language translation medical diagnosis through like for example mri or scan images you can train the model or algorithm or neural network and then later you can like if you give a new image you can find whether this patient is having some kind of tumor or he is completely safe you can automate this and like stock market prediction or uh, this stock market is something like we'll be having the past data right so it's called as time series analysis so based on the past you are going to predict the future so based on statistics the same thing and fraud detection virtual personal assistant like chat gpt uh, email or spam like it's a spam mail or a normal mail you can filter it based on the data and you can like create self driving cars using the image processing neural networks product recommendation systems movie recommendation systems traffic predictions speech recognition image recognition and so on so we are we haven't talked about machine learning operations till now we are in the base of machine learning so we want to just clarify this what is the exact step will be happening in machine learning so as i told you earlier there are three things guys we, apart from this five you just want to like summarize you will be having three things you have some data you are giving it to algorithm it is giving you prediction okay you have some data you are giving it to algorithm it is giving you prediction and what is this algorithm is doing it is using max and statistics to analyze the data and based on it it will give you predictions or output and now when you have data okay you are collecting some data and uh, for example what is this data and how it is available so it is like collected by some organization or like public forums or like surveys you can collect all the data it like for example it is for example some kind of 10000 data is available so you want to check the integrity of it whether it is correct or not whether it is appropriate or not so because this machine learning algorithm it's a statistical thing so you have to do some processing to make it work properly otherwise it will give you false outputs so what we'll be doing is we are adding some step which is known as clean prepare and manipulate the data so once you get the data you are going to analyze it you are going to process it and evaluate it and once everything is done you will be giving it to the model so the model will now give you the output okay it will be trained on it it will learn that's what called as machine learning so then what you'll do is you will give a test for it so even if it is learned you want to check whether it is learned properly or not right for example in schools we used to like schools and colleges we used to give students they used to learn and the college or school they used to give test to check whether they have learned properly or not right so in the same case we are going to give some test for this machine learning model so once the test if it is successful 
you can like you can get some score of it whether how much percent it is correct if you have 95 percent correct then very good you can try to improve it further more or if it's okay you can go and proceed with it for example your model failed to perform well so it got some poor result of for example it it is working only 60 percent correctly then it's not an efficient thing to use so what you have to do you have to go for step 5 where you will be improving it okay so you'll go and change some things and try to manipulate the data furthermore or clean it uh, proper it properly and then choose some other algorithm so there are many model or the statistical algorithms available so which is the app thing you can choose and work on it and coming into machine learning operations so what is machine learning operations so it is a core function of machine learning engineering focused on streamlining the process of taking machine learning models to production and then maintaining and monitoring them. So the thing is, once you have done this, you will be having some sort of data. Okay, it will like do all this process, you will get some high accuracy, which means you are have, having your test, your, your model is having somewhat good or 98% correct, it's fine. Now the thing is, the, you will be using it too far for the prediction. Once it is done, you will be giving some kind of new data so where it should perform well. So what will happen is, for this data it is performing well and sometimes the algorithm may fail on new set of data completely. When you are keep on running it, there can be some drift available. So what you have to do is, it is like a little bit difficult process for the machine learning engineers. So they are like took the DevOps tools like continuous integration and continuous deployment tools to automate this process. For example, this machine learning will write some kind of code, the same code, the same process, we have to write it in different format so that we can automate the running task. For example, so whatever data you give, it should run, okay, all the process should be completed and you can like maintain and monitor it. So if you find any drift with your model which is not performing well, then you can go and streamline, you can check this pipeline, you can like alter it and try to improve it furthermore. So that's what this continuous integration, continuous deployment in machine learning operations. So that's what the idea behind it. So machine learning operations is a collaborative function. So like data scientists, machine learning engineers, DevOps engineers mainly and IT engineers. So this will be the step, you will have a data, you will create a model, you will create a plan, verify it, once it is done, you will package it and release, configure and monitor it. Anything goes down, you can come back to, like you can come it in the reverse way and try to alter it. And then moving into the types of machine learning available. So first our idea is to learn machine learning entirely. So once we completed that, we are going into machine learning operations. Okay, so first our focus will be on machine learning for the next like many part of the days. So starting with the types of machine learning, what are the types of machine learning available? One thing is called as supervised machine learning, next one is called as unsupervised machine learning and the third one is called as reinforcement learning. So starting with supervised machine learning, in supervised machine learning we have some label, okay, for example this is your data, your past data you are having, okay, you are having some shapes of it and you are having separate label also, which means like if this is the thing, it is called as hexagon, if this is the shape, it is called as triangle, if this is the shape, you, it is called as square. So you have what is what, okay, and it is called a supervised machine learning if your data is labeled. If this is the feature, this is the label or this is the output, you have some sort of label for it. If it is available, then it is called a supervised machine learning. Okay, so what you will be doing, you will be giving this labeled data along with the label to this model training. Okay, this algorithm is going to use statistics to learn about this. Okay, and it will understand, oh, this is the shape, then it is called as hexagon. If this is the shape, it is called as triangle. And if this is the case, the shape of it, it is called as square. So now, once the model is training is done, which means it learned, okay, the machine learned now, you are going to ask it to predict. So this is called as the testing part, where you are going to give test for it. Like we used to have test in school days, you will be having a new set of questions and see here in this question, there is no answer. Like there is no label. So it want to find what is the label of it. 
so this is the shape it want to like based on the past experience it want to find this is known as square and this one is known as triangle so that's what this machine will give us output so this thing is called as supervised machine learning where we'll be using labeled data and labels so if it is a labeled data then it comes under supervised machine learning before going into the next type of uh, machine learning which is the unsupervised machine learning this supervised machine learning is itself having some types of it and supervised machine learning is categorized into two types one is called as classification and another one is called as regression okay so earlier what is supervised machine learning you will be having labels for it and uh, if the type like you want to classify the supervised machine learning based on the label you are having if your label is classification I, which means if your label is a categorical data then it is comes under classification what is categorical data any idea what is mean by a categorical data there are categories in that okay for example like cold or hot okay so this is a classification problem whether where you want to predict whether it is cold or hot or you come to this case so this is classification or regression we haven't seen about regression right now but see here this is a classification because here we are having some labels hexagon square or triangle where the model want to either find whether it is a square or triangle or a hexagon okay not any other than that so this is called as classification book problem because it is having categorical data and what if we have some continuous label which means for example some values a range of values a set of values in the label so you cannot go with this or that okay it will use mathematics and statistics to find a made value which is apt for based on the data okay so this is called as regression so what is the temperature going to be tomorrow so it cannot tell this or that it want to find based on the past experience for example it want to find for 84.3 or 33.2 something like that the value okay another one example can be like the stock market value you can predict it is also a regression where the label on the past data will be the previous like what is the amount or money it is going up or down so based on that it is giving you regression what will be the value whereas this is a categorical data it want to find either this or that if you have four options it want to find any one okay or five options it want to find any one whatever may be the categories it will be giving you answer of one here it want to find the regression value which is a continuous variable so this is what the types of supervised machine learning and coming back to the types of machine learning we have seen about supervised machine learning right next one is called as unsupervised machine learning so in unsupervised machine learning you don't have any labels in your data okay you will be having a bunch of data but you don't have any kind of label to tell you this is a circle this is a triangle this is a star this is a square there is nothing okay your data will be like together you don't have any kind of output to determine or any label so what we will be doing in this unsupervised machine learning your data is unlabeled okay and what we are going to do is here we are having some separate algorithms which is called as some kind of clustering algorithms where it will be creating clusters okay it will be creating clusters so what is this cluster will do it will try to find the relationship between the data okay it will try to analyze and find the relationship between the data and try to group similar things okay so for example it is like analyzing this one so it is in blue color or the shape of it it is like this one so you, we can determine this as a separate group and it is trying to find this one these green circles these are like together they are interrelated and they are grouping them separately and similarly it is grouping the stars so likewise it is separate them individually based on how they are together okay so this is what known as unsupervised machine learning where there is no label in your data you are just trying to find the clusters inside of it or grouping them the similar things you are just trying to group them by analyzing the data you are having so next and final type of machine learning is known as reinforcement learning okay so it is like a reward mechanism for example we will be having a agent 
so it will perform an action so based on the action we'll be having an interpreter if the action is correct we'll be giving it reward to it and uh, if it is like failed we, then we'll be like improving it so it is like a feedback mechanism where it will try to keep on improving it based on the reward it is getting You can convert this masterclass into one month certified internship on machine learning operations with AWS. Once you join the internship, you will be getting all these benefits such as 30 days of live sessions, 90 days of access to all the records, 6 plus source codes of AWS projects, downloadable code files, 30 days downloadable PPTs, 5 mentor live and mastermind session in Zoom where you can directly interact with the mentor and clarify all your doubts. Internship confirmation letter and then internship certification when you join this internship. To avail this internship, you can get it at a discounted fee at 799. The registration link is posted in chat box. You can get benefited by getting all these benefits of internship by joining the internship at this registration link. It is available at this discounted fee at 799. So once you join as an internship user, it is a one month internship. So you'll be getting a separate agenda and separate contents for 30 days, which includes a basics of AWS, in-depth machine learning with deep learning as well, as well as machine learning operations with from the scratch with Git, GitHub, and then SageMaker deployments and AWS AI services. We'll be deploying the projects. We have projects such as vehicle insurance, claim fraud detection, Avalon age prediction, SageMaker project, clustering project, census income prediction project with deployment as well as music rating recommender system project with deployment. So we'll be creating pipeline in AWS and we can deploy the model and give it to the client in production. With that API link, you can get predictions real time. So you can get all these benefits at this discounted fee at 799 and the registration link is posted in chat box. So it's time for us to get started with Amazon SageMaker. So this is particularly for machine learning, right? So this is a service provided by AWS for machine learning. And there are a lot of tools available here. So we are going to discuss about that too, along with the base of machine learning. So without knowing the machine learning, the base things, you cannot like, it won't be like possible for you to learn or work with it automatically. Okay. So Amazon SageMaker is a managed service from AWS that simplifies the process of building, training and deploying the machine learning model. It provides a complete set of tools and resources for data scientists and developers to develop and deploy ML models at scale. I think we can go and see an hands on with Amazon SageMaker. So I'll just open my console and we'll just go and search for SageMaker. And one thing once again, I'll tell you. Whenever you like, I have a habit every day when the morning, when I used to console, when I used to log in to my console, the first thing I'll go and check is the AWS budgets. Okay. I just want to verify everything is proper within the limit. Okay. And I'll check my mail to verify there is any kind of alert I got. So please keep it a habit. Whenever you are like logging into your console every day, it's better to go and check this AWS budgets and verify everything is fine under the value limit you are setting. Okay, if you don't want to in incur any other additional costs, it's better to do this, do this. Now let's go with SageMaker. As you can see, build, train, deploy machine learning models. It provides an entire like infrastructure for you to do it. Okay, you can go with the SageMaker. Okay, how it works. So you can label your data, you can build it, train them tune it, deploy, discover and improve it. Okay. And there are a lot of clients. They are using this AWS SageMaker for their machine learning purpose. And when you come to this left side, you can find many things guys with something known as studios there. We are going to explore it. So any idea what is mean by integrated development environment or IDE? If you know Python, you would have known about it. We are having Python IDE or Google collab IDLE. So there is this term called as IDE, which is the abbreviation for integrated development environment. And we are also having IDLE, which is integrated development and learning environment. So what is this thing is, this is the entire software or the service 
or it is an infrastructure place where you can perform or write code and do things to you the output and all those things simply this is the meaning of ide integrated development environment where you can develop things work on it test it train it and do all those things and this sage maker studio is also a thing it is an ide for machine learning so if you have an idea about what is jupyter notebook so it is also a python ide right so you would have used anaconda navigator if you don't know about it please don't worry about it you will be seeing that so there is something known as anaconda navigator it's a software where you can use jupyter notebook so it is an ide for python like google collab is also an ide for python they both are like little bit similar in the look wise and operational wise and uh, this sage maker or this aws what they have done is they have tied up with this jupyter notebook so when you use this studio sage maker studio notebook it is nothing but your jupyter notebook but it is like tuned for amazon web services okay so that's it about this ide where we are going to write code and the thing is this sage maker they are providing a lot of additional services guys so for you like if you don't know about machine learning or if you don't know about python programming if you don't know about the tools you don't have to worry about it but you can perform machine learning how they have all the things as a feature okay you can go and train it automatically you can test it so without any like without any code you can automate the process you can use select the options and perform this task so many things like that are available but like it is not proper to directly jump and learn about it okay so what our idea is to we'll be learning okay we'll be using notebook to learn how to do it with code and then parallelly we'll be seeing about amazon web services in sage maker so how to do it without the code okay how to use these options and perform the same task so we'll be doing it parallelly okay how to do it on your own with code and how to do it without code using sage maker things and uh, we'll be working on sage maker itself so we are having notebook right so if you want to open a notebook so we are having many things guys here and in the next 25 days we are going to explore this so don't worry about it at first we'll just start with this notebook so in the left side you can just click this and you can find this notebook and you can find this notebook instances if you click it okay so this is a notebook instance i am having okay so this is, is the jupyter notebook i was talking about so this is where we'll just start learning about the pandas and numpy for machine learning purpose for the data pre processing okay for the next few classes we'll be working on it so you need to create a notebook instance so if you don't have it what you can do is you can just go and create a notebook instance so you can keep, give a name for it internship okay you can i'll just go with this instance type so based on it the speed vary but this will be comes under free tier so if you want to go with free tier you can just select this notebook instance and this platform okay and the iam role it is important to like if you are new, doing it newly you can just go and click this create a new role and it is important in this s3 you can specify any s3 bucket okay or you can have any optional s3 bucket which means this instance will be using only that bucket where you have to store your data and you can take it automatically so if you don't have any idea like i may store my data set in any of the s3 bucket so you can go with any s3 so later on you can just integrate with it create a role so this will create an iam role and this is a role you can note it down so whenever you want to give some permission for sage maker you can use this role to add some permissions in iam and that's it if you have any git repository you can just add it here or if you don't have please don't worry about it we can just go and click create notebook instance and this is going to take some little bit of time to complete and now it's in service which means it's created so it will look like this so what you can do at first we'll just work with jupyter then we'll move into jupyter lab okay so first click this open jupyter so this is going to take you to this one where we'll be getting this jupyter notebook so it is a particular ide for you to writing python code so we'll be using this for performing machine learning stuff with code okay 
so what you can do you can go and click this new and uh, click this conda python 3 so it is going to create a python notebook with dot ipynv format it is named as untitled you can go and check this see here untitled dot ipynv you can just rename it to by clicking here like uh, notebook one something like that okay that will be reflected here and this is a place everything will be stored okay in this instance so yeah that's it now we can just go and perform some python code for example print we'll start with the classical thing whenever we used to start a programming language we'll just go with hello world right yeah we got the output here so likewise whatever you are doing you will be having an output here so what we'll be doing is we'll be just this is a notebook so we'll start from this in SageMaker but in we are going to start with tomorrow's class where we'll be seeing about pandas library so which is helpful for us to work with the data sets okay to handle the data we'll be needing something known as pandas library from machine learning sorry from python programming so you just need to have very basic understanding of python programming so you can continue with this pandas so we'll be starting from the base of machine learning okay so once you are done with it what you can do is you can go and click this logout okay and you can see which notebook is running i'll just refresh it okay so if it's keep on running what you have to do is either you can go inside of it where instead of log out so it's my mistake what you can do is instead of that you can go and click this file and close and halt it okay and now if you see it's no nothing is running so even though you have it you can go and shut it down directly from this window and here you will be having this files present okay once you're done with it you can go and log out of it and uh, yeah and the thing is if you don't if you are not using it right now nothing is running you can go and click this and in the actions you can just stop it okay so it will like it will take some time and it will like show like this other instance i'm having like stopped so when you want to use it you can just go and click the start it will like start in few seconds and then you can open your notebook and work on it so this is what the sage maker we are going to work from the base okay and there are some other things like studio where we'll be performing some other tasks some advanced things so we'll be working on it in the further days and another thing we are having something known as studio lab so if you open the sage maker studio lab so they are providing this SageMaker Jupyter Notebook for free okay in this Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab you don't even have want to have any AWS account okay there is no account no fee for this but here you can perform the basic things you cannot go with machine learning operations where you need some other tools but here you can work with the base of machine learning you can create project and work on it okay it's an IDE so what you have to do is if you want it you can request for a free account so in like mostly within one day you'll receive a mail of your credentials you can work on it and you can select your cpu gpu they are giving some free time every day so you can work on it and it's completely free and you can have a 15 gb of storage to work on it so it's like optional if you want to work with studio lab but you cannot go with machine learning operations and now we'll be like from the next class we are just starting with notebook instances and then go into some other like other tools in SageMaker. You can convert this master class into one month certified internship on machine learning operations with AWS. On joining the internship you will be getting all these benefits such as 30 days of live sessions, 90 days of access to all the records, source codes and project files downloadables, 30 downloadable PPTs. 5 Mentor Live in Mastermind session in Zoom where you can directly interact with the mentor and clarify all your doubts. Internship confirmation letter and then internship certification. To avail these benefits you can join the internship at discounted fee at 799 and the registration link is posted in chat box. You can join as an internship user by registering there and you can get all these benefits. You will be getting a 30 days agenda, a content for 30 days along with all the downloadables and PPTs and these project file downloadables. So coming back to the slides, so we set up the base for machine learning. We know what is SageMaker and how to like where to write our code. And now let us understand the proper workflow in machine learning. So 
when you like tell it in a brief you can tell like you have a data you want to process it you can give it to a model you you'll, like you will be giving test to it like you want to improve it so this is the this is the five steps you have seen in previous it's like a brief overview but actually when you go inside and work on a project what is the exact step involved in machine learning what is the workflow so we are having things like first thing is data collection okay so imagine you are working in a company as a machine learning engineer you don't have to worry about the data collection because like they have a separate team for it and your work is to just get the data from them and then work on it okay and they do the remaining process but right now you, you are not working in a company so what this company will do they like they have some requirement or so they will purchase this data from some other company or some other organization so how like you here comes the question how this organization or how they are collecting the data so if you are having a company some other company so like you are having some kind of e-commerce company so you will be storing your data okay so what all things you are doing your company or your profile or your customers you are just storing it you will be having some data of it or if you are going going for healthcare related machine learning where the data is healthcare so you have to go for survey okay or public forums or surveys you can get it okay like you can get it from the public so these things are done by some organizations so this is how the like the data collection part in company or industry side but now we are not in a company side right so even some of you may have but if you are not present in such situation you are a student and you want to perform it what you can do is we can search for open source data sets so what is this open source data set is many of the organizations like there are certain websites where they will be posting their data set okay it is a open source for this community for machine learning so if you have an idea or imagine to do a project for example if i am thinking i want to perform a machine learning uh, like healthcare related project so i want some kind of hot disease data sets so if i have this data set i can work on it and try to find solution so what i can do i cannot go like with my capacity i can cannot just go or influence the hospitals or collect the patient details so i can search for in the internet in some communities where they will be giving the data sets in free source so we can just go and download it and work on it so that's how our machine learning is working it same the data is like different how it is gathered okay so once you got the data you will go for pre processing so what is pre processing as i told you earlier this data set may or may not be correct so you want to verify and check whether it is proper or not then only you can proceed with it right so what we will be doing we will be verifying it so for this pre processing part we will be using something like libraries like pandas numpy etc okay and then going into feature selection so in your data set like there are many features i'll show you what a data set is okay there can be many features and which are the features are deciding factor and which are the features are important you have to select it and then going into train test split where we will be splitting our data set into training part and testing part which means if you are having 100 questions okay and 100 answers what i'll be doing is i'll be taking 70 questions and 70 answers for training and remaining 30 question and answer is for testing so when i select this model what i'll be doing is i'll train the model or make it to learn on the 70 questions along with the answer all the label okay so it will learn and what i'll be doing later on is i'll go for prediction where i'll give only the 30 questions and not the answers so the now based on the learning from that 70 question this model should give answer for the 30 question so this will give some 30 answers and i have i have my original 30 answer so what i'll be doing is i'll be evaluating it and how much is correct i can give some mark or score for it and based on that i can try and improve or if it's okay i can go for further process this is what the workflow in machine learning so in this class we'll just see about data collection part okay so what is data collection once again if you want data you can just try to get it from the resources available through the internet and there are three important websites so you want to note it down one is kaggle another one is uca machine learning repository and next one is google dataset search so these are some of the common websites where you can find data sets and kaggle is very very important you can create an account there and you can download data sets very easily so i can even show you guys hands on 
for example if i want to download this data set for example kaggle hard disease if i search it see this kaggle it's a particular community for machine learning and data scientists okay you can go and click this kaggle okay you can search the data sets here for diabetes or titanic i'll just go with heart i can find many data sets here okay you can just go and search what is kaggle it's the largest data set community with powerful tools and resources okay you can download many data sets here so if i want kaggle heart disease for example if i want this data set i can click it what is a data set the collection of this data that's nothing but the data set and you can find like these are the features you are having in this heart disease data okay and what like for example what is the value what is the meaning of it and so on and this is our data set guys so we are totally having 14 columns so we are having the patient's age their sex cp which is chest pain type okay blood pressure cholesterol and so on okay and finally we are having something known as target this is the label and this label is either 1 or 0 so what does this means okay either the patient is having heart disease or not which means if it is zero it is no disease and if it is one which means the disease is present so it is a supervised learning classification problem and if you want to download this data you can go and click this or click this button you need to have account for it kaggle account okay you can create it with your mail id you can click it it is going to download the data set okay it will asking for the location sometimes it is downloaded as a csv file sometimes you may get it as a winrar file you just want to extract it so this csv file is my data set so this csv is nothing but comma separated value format you can go and click the property microsoft excel comma separated value file comma separated value if it will be opened in excel only but if you go and click this open with notepad you can find all these values are separated with the help of comma okay that will be like decoder and interpreted and separated into separate columns i can open it directly and you can see nice that comma is now in separate columns and you can find this is my entire data set i am having the patient details okay each row is a patient detail and uh, for these details the target or the output is zero which means he don't have and then he have heart disease and something like that and totally this data set consists of you can see more than 1000 patient records okay and this is what we'll be training the model and testing it and make prediction so that's how this machine learning works and as i told you earlier these are called as features the deciding factor or the questions for the machine learning to learn and this is the target or output or the label okay and in this feature we have seen a step right feature selection so if you don't want to include this cholesterol okay if i think this is not important for this task i can leave it okay i can select the remaining things or if i think like age and cholesterol and uh, like some other detail like this this one and these things these four are the important i can just go with these alone to train or give the question okay and we will be discussing about this elaborately so this is just but the data collection part okay you can download like this you can also go and search UCI machine learning repository so this is also where you can download your data set see here heart disease iris data set and many data sets are available you can search it you can contribute it also okay and you can also have google data set search so these are some of the common publicly freely available data sets uh, like diabetes data set so this will give you the information see here it is directly taking you to kaggle so it is telling you can find it here so it's a search engine actually so it will give you different directions where you can download it and like there, there are separate separate community and organizations they like download like collect the data set and give it to the public so you can search and download it so that's how this data collection part work and once we are done with the collecting the data so if you want to use this data in your notebook what you have to do 
remember we have seen in previous class once you have this data or csv file you can use the block storage which is nothing but sorry you can use this simple s3 aws s3 storage object storage for storing the data set right so you can create a bucket and upload this data set and store it there so you can like use this s3 to access this data set from your notebook so we'll be discussing about that in tomorrow's class how to load this data set into your notebook id how to work on it and these are the important python libraries you require for performing the data analysis and pre-processing it includes pandas numpy matplotlib and cbound for visualization and scikit-learn for other important stuffs okay and uh, from next class we'll be starting with pandas so once we complete pandas we'll be seeing some tool in aws which is known as glue etl to perform the same task without pandas with that glue etl automatically and simply so that's how our agenda is going to be and we'll continue with the remaining libraries and their respective tools and then we'll move into machine learning algorithms and the steps once we complete machine learning projects we'll be moving into machine learning operations so yeah that's it for today guys thank you